Hello everyone, my name is Parmeshwar Yadav. Today I am here to uh, present the seminar presentation on the topic Utilization of Red Word in Civil Engineering. Here is the content of my seminar topic. First one is Introduction to Red Word, Composition of Red Word, Environmental Problem Associated with Disposal of Red Word, Storage and Disposal of Red Word, Neutralization of Red Word, Utilization of Red Word, and finally Conclusion and the References. Let's start with the introduction. What is red mud? Red mud is a high alkaline waste product that is generated in the production of aluminium from bauxite in the bare process. Depending on the raw material process, 1 to 2.5 tons of red mud is generated per ton of aluminium produced. Here is the next slide. What does red mud consist of? So, red mud consists of bauxite residue which can be formed by following process in which we take red mud from aluminium production in which 70% of NOH and 30% of bauxite residue is present. Then it is leave for settling. Then we get bauxite residue settled. Then after drying, we get dry bauxite residue. Then here are some typical composition of red mud and Indian red mud of different locations. So here are the some compositions. First one is the percentage of Fe2O3 is between 30 to 60 percent and the percentage of Al2O3 is between 10 to 20 percent and the percentage of SiO2 is between 10 to 20 percent and the percentage of N2O is between 2 to 10 percent and the percentage CaO is between 2 to 8 percent and the percentage of TiO2 is between 0 to 25 percent and the chemical compositions of red mud are as follows. In this next slide, here are some environmental problems of red mud. First one is, disposal of red mud is typically problematic for most aluminium refineries. Red mud is disposed as dry or semi-dry material in red mud, pond or bauxite mines. Untreated red mud has such high pH that plant growth is impossible and this causes a very serious and alarming environmental problem. The environmental problem associated with the disposal of red mud are its high pH, alkali seepage into underground water, safety storage problem, alkaline airborne dust emissions, vast area of land required for disposals, minor and trace amount of heavy metals and radionuclides seepage into groundwater. Now, in this slide, in this slides, let's see storage and disposals of red mud. Most of the bauxite residue produced is stored on land for future rehabilitation or use called red mud, ponds, bauxite residue disposals area. Here are some disposal method. First one, CCD, closed cycle disposal. Second one, MCCD, modified closed cycle disposals. These two methods are traditional methods. Now, here are some current methods which are as follows. First one is seawater discharge. Second one, lagooning. Third one, dry stacking method. Fourth one, dry disposals. Here are some pictures of traditional method CCD and modified MCCD. First one is red mud disposal lake in the vicinity of Kasipur region of Orissa, India. And the second one is the pond of Nalco factory in Daman, Jodi, India. Let's see about the some current methods in which first one is seawater discharge. It is carried out through mud washing circuit. Its solid content is between 30 to 40 percent. It is discharged by via pipeline or ship. It reduces caustic soda levels. Second one is lagooning. It is also carried out through mud washing circuit. Its solid content consists 30 to 40 percent. It is discharged by via pipeline or ships. Here is the comparison between lagooning and dry disposals. First one, lagooning. Its pH is between 11 to 13 and its solid percentage is between 30 to 35 percent. It transport through pipeline. It is cheaper and simpler, but it gives high environmental risks. And in dry disposals, its pH is between 9 to 10 and its solid percentage is greater than 65 percent. And it is transport by trucks. It is more complicated and, and expensive. Uh, it is much it gives much less environmental risk this is the main slide 
of our presentation. First one is utilization in building and chemical industries. It is used in building materials, engineering, constructions, and it is used in paving blocks. It is also used as feed stock for manufacturing, adsorbents and catalyst supports. It is used in ceramic, glasses, paints, polymers, etc. Red mud is also used for wastewater treatment in which for removal of toxic heavy metal and metalloid ions. In organic anions such as nitrate, fluoride and phosphate as well as organic including dyes, phenolic compounds and bacteria. It is also used in metallurgy such as steel making additives for slags, selection of main component, selection of other metals. It is also used for recovery of metals. The two main approaches which have been generally investigated to recover iron values are based on first one is solid state reduction of red mud followed by magnetic separation to recover iron and second one is reduction is melting in a blast sharp furnace to produce fake iron. Here are some figures of these processes are given below. Here are some processes developed in India for metallurgy. First one is National Metallurgical Laboratory, Jamshedpur, has evaluated technically feasibility of Al2O3 extractions along with the vanadium oxide from muri red mud by soda lime sinter process. Second one, Prasad and co workers have explored the production of ferro titanium to utilize both iron and titanium values of red Indian mud. Third one is recovery of Fe, Al2O3, B, and Cr from red mud has been developed by Regional Research Laboratory in Bhumneshwar. Here is the conclusion of our seminar presentation. First one, red mud has wide range of application for, from building material to metal recovery. Second one, developments in dry disposal method will lead to better management of residue, but neutralization of red mud will be an essential ingredient of any permanent solution. Third one is continuous research is required by studying residue utilization technologies to reduce alkalinity of red mud, which is the most important barrier for it reuse and disposal management. Fourth one is red mud ponds can be rehabilitated by growing suitable flora and fauna on it. Last one is depending on mud characteristics, a systematic strategy should be taken up by each aluminium plant and a zero waste aluminium refi refinery may be realized by developing a universal technique of disposal, management and full utilization of red mud. Here are some references given below for external knowledge. Thank you.